In this video, I will show you how to use Microsoft PowerPoint to create powerful, complex animations. Let's get started. Here I am inside PowerPoint, and it's a blank presentation. I'm on the title slide. That's all I have. And you know, it doesn't really matter what version of PowerPoint I'm using in this video. What I'm going to show in this video should apply to just about all versions of Microsoft PowerPoint that are Windows-based. And many of these same things will also work on Mac. So here on my title slide, I'm going to click to add a title, and I'll just call this Jack and Jill. That's going to be the story that I'm going to tell in this animation. And I could click to add a subtitle, maybe put my name there, or just a subtitle to the story. And next, I could design this slide to be more colorful, to have some images or things like that, and I think I will do that later. But for now, I just want to create a new blank slide. So I'm going to go here to the Home tab, and instead of clicking New Slide, I'm going to click the bottom part of that button, and I'm going to choose Blank. I want this second slide to be completely blank. I don't want to have to deal with text boxes or anything else. I just want it to be completely blank. Now, if you know the story of Jack and Jill, you know that I need, at this point, a hill, and I need a couple of people, Jack and Jill. So let's go out and find some images. These could be photos that I've taken on my camera and that I've transferred to my computer. They could be images on the internet that I download or copy-paste into my presentation. Of course, citing my sources, etc. But another option in PowerPoint is just to go here to the upper left and click on Insert. And then I can go to Pictures, and if I click there, one of the options is Online Pictures. So right from within Microsoft PowerPoint, I can search for online pictures. Now, if you have a Microsoft 365 subscription, you may also have access to special stock images provided through your subscription, so check that out as well. But for now, I'm just going to go here to Online Pictures, and it's going to pull up a window that I can use to search for, in my case, a hill. Now I think I would like this to be a cartoon hill. So I'm going to type in cartoon hill, I tap enter, and I'm getting some very colorful hills that I could use in my project. And I think I'll go with this one here. That looks good. I click on it, I click insert, and that cartoon drawing of a hill is added to my PowerPoint slide. Now because I have Microsoft 365 Designer has opened and it's suggesting some changes I could make to this graphic, I'm just going to X out of that. I don't really need it in this case. But with my image on the slide, what I can do now is I can click and drag to make it bigger so that it fills the slide, maybe something like that. If I want to or need to, I could flip the image just by clicking and dragging on the little handles on the sides, you can see what I just did. I clicked on the little circular handle that was on the right, and I dragged it to the left, and then the left side to the right, and it flipped the picture. So now that the background fills the slide, I'm ready now to put in my two characters. So again, I'm going to go to the Insert tab. I'll go to Pictures, Online Pictures, and I'll type in Cartoon Boy. Now, as you can see, I got a variety of results. Some of them come with boxes around the characters. For example, this one. I have to deal with the rectangular background behind the character, including clouds, and I already have clouds in my presentation. And then some of the other results may not show the boy's legs, the boy's arms. So you have to be kind of careful with this to make sure that you're getting a character or an image that matches what you're trying to do. Now I'm going to show you a trick for getting results that do not have the rectangular background behind the image, in this case the boy. So I'm going to type in cartoon boy, but this time I'm going to add .png to my search term. So I'll tap enter, and with that change, the results should not have backgrounds. Now occasionally you'll find one that does, but for the most part it gets rid of images that have backgrounds. So I'm going to select this boy here click insert, and this image of a boy is going to work a lot better than this first one. So I'll click on the first one, tap delete to get rid of it. Now another trick that you can try, although it doesn't always work, is you could do a search for, let's say, boy.gif, G-I-F. Some people pronounce it GIF. In those cases, you might actually get results that are animated. And in fact, I'm going to adjust the search so that it says walking boy. And let's try one out. I'll click insert. And 
Now I've got this animated GIF that I could have walking up the hill. Now, of course, he's got the white rectangle in the background, so you'll have to make those decisions. Do you want to search around for an animated GIF that's actually animated already and kind of moving in place? Or is it more important to not have that white rectangle in the background? And sometimes you can do both things. So now I have Jack. I'm going to go back and click Insert Pictures, Online Pictures, do a search for Cartoon Girl, and I'll add .png. How about this one here? I click Insert, and that quickly, I've got Jack and I've got Jill. Now I want to start this animation with Jack and Jill off screen to the left. One of the better ways to do that is to go up here to the View tab and go to Zoom, and I'm going to zoom out maybe 33%, click OK. And now I can easily place those two characters off screen so that they're not visible at the beginning of the presentation or the animation. Real quick, I'm going to add yet another image to this animation. I need, as you probably know, a pail of water. I definitely want this to be a .png. This one might work. I'll click on it, click Insert. There's my pail of water, and I'll put it up here at the top of the hill. If I want to, I can zoom in or out on this slide by using this zoom slider here at the right. I think that's probably a good zoom level for what I want to show. Okay, so how do I actually animate this? I, this is nice, I've got some colorful images, but how do I turn this into an animation? What I can do is select the first character or the first item that I want to animate, and then go up here to the Animations tab, and I get some animations options. In addition to these options here, if you want, you can click Animation Pane, and I do recommend that. Once you select that and then start making some changes to the animations for a character or an image, you'll see some options here at the right. Okay, there's some interesting animations I could do here for Jack. I could have him appear, but remember he's off screen. Nobody's going to see him appear off screen. I could have him float in or fly in, and some of these are really good options but I'm going to choose Motion Paths. As you probably noticed, I clicked here in the lower right corner of the animation options. There's a line with what looks like a V underneath it or an arrow. If you click on that, you get Entrance Animations. These are animations that will happen when an object appears. There's also Emphasis Animations. These are animations that take place when an image is already on the screen and it's time for it to do something else. You can have it grow or shrink or spin. And then there's also exit animations. As an image is disappearing, it could animate. But then there's this fourth category that's really powerful, and that is motion paths. I can have Jack follow a straight line or an arc or a turn or a shape or a loop. In many cases, though, when you're doing storytelling or other types of animation with PowerPoint, this is what you're looking for. That's what I'm going to do in this case. But before I do that, I'm probably going to want to close this animation pane temporarily just because it might get in the way. But I'll go back here now and choose Custom Path for Jack. I'll click approximately where he currently is, and then I'll have him walk straight into the scene. Now it's kind of hard to see, but notice that the plus sign that is my mouse cursor has a straight line attached to it. And that line represents where Jack will go, the path that he will follow. So I want him to walk basically straight into the scene and then start climbing the hill. Clicking, moving the mouse, clicking again, clicking again to kind of follow the slope of the hill. And then when I'm done, I can tap Escape on the keyboard. And the path that I've selected is the path that Jack will follow. If I select that path, I could adjust it a little bit if I want to, just by clicking and dragging to maybe raise him up a little bit higher. And at any point now, I can try the animation just by going to the Slideshow button. There's one here. There's also one on the Home tab and other places, but I'll just click there. And you'll notice that nothing happens. Nothing happens until I press, in this case, Spacebar or the right arrow key on the keyboard or click the left mouse button. So that's something we need to think about. How do I want to initiate this animation? If I click back on Jack, you'll notice that it shows here across the top the type of animation I selected, which is Custom Path. There are some effect options I could choose. And then over here on the right, notice that it says Start. How will this animation of Jack start? Right now it's set to On Click. Now that also works not just with a click, but with Spacebar or the right arrow key, etc. 
So I can change that. Instead of on click, I want it to happen with previous. Now there's no animation previous to Jack. So how will that work? When I selected with previous and there's nothing prior to this, what it will do is it will animate Jack as soon as the slide begins. So let's try that. This time, instead of clicking here on the slideshow button, I'm going to click here at the left where it says preview and I just click and there I see Jack zooming up the hill immediately with no space bar, no click, no right arrow. So this is working really well. I'm gonna click on Jack again though to point out that another of your options is to adjust the duration. So how long is it gonna take for Jack to get up that hill? Right now it's two seconds, but I could change that, let's say to five seconds. I'll tap enter on the keyboard. And if I want to, I can put in a delay. So as soon as this slide begins, right now there's zero delay. With previous, Jack is gonna start entering the scene. He's gonna go up the hill to the top. Why not put in a little delay? So maybe, maybe a second and a half delay. That should work. Let's try it out. I'll click preview. And at this point, there's a delay. And then here comes Jack up that hill. Now you can probably see that it would be advantageous in some cases to have an animated GIF, one that has legs moving. It would look a little better maybe, but I think this type of animation, even without Jack moving his arms, moving his legs, is still magical. It can be very educational and work very well for you. At this point, I want to click back on this button here to activate the animation pane because I want you to get used to using this, at least from time to time. It's going to come in handy. And from here, I want to add an animation to Jill. I want her to also go up the hill. So with her selected, I'm going to click here on, again, animations in the animations group. I'll click on this button. I'll go down here and choose custom path. I'll click approximately where she is. And just like Jack, I'll have her enter the scene and then start just going up that hill. Maybe we'll stop there. I tap escape on the keyboard and her animation is recorded. Just like before, I need to check these options. Jill's animation is going to start on click? I don't think so. I would like it to start with previous. Now in this case, there is an animation previous. It's Jack entering the scene. So Jill will also enter with him, but slightly behind, just because I set her to the left. Notice that the duration for Jill is set to two seconds, so she would be moving quite a bit faster than Jack. I've changed that so she's only slightly faster than Jack. And then a delay? I don't know if she needs a delay or not. Let's try it out, maybe a two second delay. So now I click preview and we get a delay. And then here comes Jack, here comes Jill zooming to the top. Now with this animation pane, you can see how your selections are gonna work. So here is the first animation, here is the second animation. It shows you the order. If you click on a particular animation, you can double check how it will begin. Do you want it to start with previous, on a click, or after previous? You could also go into the timings, but another way to change those things is just to select the animation and then go up here and look at the options up above. If I do decide to reorder these animations, I could just simply click and drag to reorder them, or I could use these tools here in the upper right. Just select an animation, choose move later or move earlier. Okay, let's do one more animation. Once Jack and Jill get to the top, I need Jack to fall down. So how would I do that? Now there's a couple of different ways I could have Jack spin and fall down. One way to do that would be to select him and then go here to the animation tab and click on add animation. And I want him to spin. That'll make him look like he's falling. And I'm gonna change it from start on click to start after previous. So if I've done this correctly, Jack will climb up the hill, Jill will follow immediately after, and then after both of those things have happened, Jack will start spinning. Let's try it out. I'll click preview. We've got our delay. Here comes Jack. Here comes Jill. And there Jack is falling. He's spinning. So a few things I might change here is I might lower the duration of Jack spinning. That's gonna make it look faster. No delay. And I want to add an additional animation that's gonna be another custom path. So Jack is going to be falling down the hill while he spins. So I'm just creating another motion path all the way, maybe off screen here to the left. And then I'll tap escape on the keyboard. 
He's going to be falling, ideally, while also spinning. Once again, I need to check my settings. I don't want it to be on click. I want it to be with previous this time. So as he's spinning, he's also falling back down the hill. And I want to see if we can have him fall fairly quickly, maybe 1.25 seconds. Let's try it out, what we have so far. I'll click preview. Here comes Jack, here comes Jill. I could speed up Jill. And then Jack falls and spins off screen. So this is coming together very, very well. I want you to see that you can also insert media, audio, and actually record audio. Now, if your version of PowerPoint doesn't allow you to do this, you could certainly go out on the internet to a website called Vocaroo, or there's also all these other alternatives. You could record your sound there, download it as a WAV file or an MP3, and then use it in your project. But in my case, this is built into PowerPoint, and I can just click here to record. Jack and his friend Jill ended up going up that hill, and they were trying to fetch a pail of water that was there at the top. Ultimately, though, Jack, he fell down. I click OK. Now, that didn't rhyme as well as uh, the original, but uh, it'll do. And so now you can see in my animation pane, not only do I have animations, but I also have a recorded sound. And I can place that where I want it to be. How about up here between Jack and Jill entering the scene? And I want that to begin with Jack entering the scene, or maybe after, it doesn't matter. I could just click here on this arrow. Maybe I'll choose with previous. So as Jack enters, the sound should play. All right, let's give this a try. Here on the Animations tab, I can click Preview. Jack and his friend Jill ended up going up that hill, and they were trying to fetch uh, a pail of water that was there at the top. Ultimately, though, Jack, he fell down, and uh, he ended up breaking. Now, I just realized if I put my narration here at the top, some of these other animations will have to wait for my recorded narration to end before they happen. So you can see, those are the basics of animating with PowerPoint and even including some recorded sound. Now, sometimes that recorded sound can be tricky. You'll have to think it through. But I hope you can see some of the tools that you have when you're trying to animate in Microsoft PowerPoint. Now, keep in mind, in PowerPoint, I can have multiple slides. So this could just be scene number one, and I could create a scene number two here so I can show what happens next in this gripping story. Now let's say my animation is done. I could simply save this as a typical PowerPoint presentation, or I could go to File, Export, and choose Create a Video. This would take my animated PowerPoint presentation and turn it into potentially a full HD animated video, or if I prefer, 4K, or some of these other less high definition options. I'll just go with Full HD, and I'll click Create Video. PowerPoint wants me to decide where to download the finished video to, and I'll put it just in my Downloads folder. I click Export, and it's going to take a little while. You can see it working down here, but once this progress bar is complete, I'll be able to go to my Downloads folder, and I'll be able to open this MP4 movie. Let's give PowerPoint a minute to complete this process, and then I'll resume the video. Okay, it's finished. Here in my Downloads folder, I have a movie that I created in PowerPoint, and it's an animated movie. In my case, I selected to have five seconds on the title slide, and then here we go. There's Jack, there's Jill. Uh-oh, Jack Jack's having and trouble. Jack Jill ended up going up that hill. I'm going to stop the video there, and I'll just tap Escape, and I'll just tap Back to get back to PowerPoint. So those are the basic skills that you need to create animated videos or movies within Microsoft PowerPoint. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell, and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do that by clicking the Thanks button below the video, or you could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.